I do uh, try the exercises. Or the, anybody has the collection of exercises? Because I realize that in the web page is not, um, uh, well, I guess everybody has seen this, no? But um, so in the web page here, uh, you have when uh, here when it says slides, uh, you have the the link to the uh, to the lesson one slides are the slides, but then there is also the outline. Actually, in the outline you can also find uh, the some uh, uh, references. Uh, the course is based on these three reviews. Uh, this is a review that we wrote uh, in Nature Physics, and it's more a kind of o overview of the whole uh, topic. Uh, this one that you can uh, download from archive uh, is, uh, is more or less the course, except for the information flows, which is very briefly uh, discussed in this paper. And this one, Information flows in nano machines is a, is a paper foc is a review but pedagogical. These three uh, papers they try to be pedagogical. I don't know, <laughs> but they try to be pedagogical. I mean, easy uh, to read or at least self self contained. So, um, well, this is not easy to read uh, the whole thing. But uh, I, and the, the part of information flows, which is something that I think is is. It's interesting here, it's more advanced, but it is something that it is now pe people is using a lot to understand molecular motors in, in, bio, in, in, in biology and nanomachines uh, to try to interpret those machines as, uh, as Maxwell demons. So this is what we will study next week. And uh, here you have uh, it's based on this. So, so with these three uh, papers, it, everything is covered. And here you have uh, the references, which are more on, 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 on each chapter. If you are interested in information theory, the best book is this one, by uh, Cover and Thomas, Elements of Information Theory. This is a great book uh, with a lot of examples and exercises, and, and very intuitive. It's, it's, uh, um, uh, so. Um, and here is the Maxwell demon, and so on. And then here you have the original papers, let's say, of each of, of each uh, topic. So if you want to go to the uh, uh, to the uh, original uh, papers, and then you have the exercises. I, I guess um, I guess uh, you are doing the exercises, but uh, Leah and I didn't get any. Well, we got got some questions, but we are, uh, I mean, you can ask, uh, I'm usually in the afternoon in the, in, in, in here, and Leah is also here now, and uh, or you can other, you can uh, write by email or in the coffee break or wherever you like, but uh, please try the exercise. And I think on Thursday evening or afternoon, uh, Friday, uh, Leah will, um, you will have a discussion session, but uh, you, you should try the exercises before uh, you, Leah or any, any one of you solve the exercises in the, in the blackboard. Especially, uh, the, uh, there are a lot of exercises based on the CDR engine. Remember, the CDR engine is a box where you put a piston, you measure, and you move the piston uh, all the way uh, uh, in an expansion. And uh, it's very interesting to see what happens if you have error in the measurement, error in the measurement. Okay. Uh, before, um, ah, another thing that is fun, maybe uh, uh, is that if you want to play, uh, this is, uh, Leah and I were in a project in, in, with Natalia Ares in Oxford on nanotubes, and we were trying to we were trying to interpret um, uh, nano machines as Maxwell demons, and one of the people in the group, uh, Brandon, he made this uh, this game. You can uh, think what uh, Maxwell demon feels, <laughs> and it's not easy. <laughs> you have you can open the door, but uh, it's really hard. Open. No. 
<laughs> well, I, I did it. I, I, I was able to put all the, no, all the, the blues are very slow, so you have to take very long to, to move it. But I, I managed this morning to put the, all the reds in one side, uh, except one, except one. So you can play with it. And, um, uh, okay, and, uh, and before going on, a couple of, uh, of notes uh, on yesterday. Yesterday was uh, just a brief account of information theory, very uh, an introduction. Uh, first, uh, a mistake that Edgar noticed is that uh, 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 the, I, I said a Steiner lemma for this uh, probability of error. Uh, remember, uh, I think it's guess Q, the real is P, no, or something like that. What was um, guess P if the Q is the real? And uh, and uh, I said that this is uh, this is asymptotically two to minus n d p q, and this is called Stein's lemma. So I added er without. So it's a Stein's lemma, and and you can see the 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 the, the rigorous formulation and everything in Cover's book if somebody is interested. But it is a very interesting. Uh, Application. This is uh, the, the why the the curva collider divergence is so important. Edgar, we? Oui? Yeah, of course. This two comes. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, this is something that uh, you you have to get used to to it when when we write uh, all the things that we have written yesterday like minus p log p, uh, and so on. And here we wrote this as uh, p log p divided by q. Uh, you can, as I said, you can measure all these quantities, mutual information, entropy, uh, relative entropy. You can measure in, in bits if the log is log of base 2. You can measure in nuts if the, if the log is the natural log. Or you can measure in joules by, per Kelvin if you multiply by, by the Boltzmann constant. And the Stein's lemma in information theory, they use bits. So this is, this is the result in information theory. And this is, and you see here, two, this two comes because it's bits. Uh, you can put this. The, so, so here we should, the, we should specify the in bits. Or uh, otherwise, it would be like that. And the D in nuts. And Edgar has a very nice work on uh, how this thing, the the, the Kullback library entropy is is related with when you apply this to P is the probability of something in a forward process in a process, and Q is the same probability in the backward process. The Kullback library is related with the entropy production. It's, it's a measure of irreversibility. This is something that uh, we have work on for many years that you can use. Uh, the Kullback library is, is a measure of distinguishability. So if you apply it to forward and backward processes, it's a measure of irreversibility. It's a measure of the arrow of time. So uh, when uh, this was the first time we were able to quantify the arrow of time. And there is a lot of interesting literature on that. And now people is interested in measuring irreversibility in complex systems. But we don't know why. <laughs> okay. Ah, and the other note, the other note is uh, something that I discussed with Matteo that uh, entropy is defined like that. No, the entropy of a discrete random variable uh, is is like that. Is uh, minus p x log p x. And this is a discrete sum. So it's a it's the this, has, this is a number between 0 and 1 and dimensionless. And log of dimensionless is dimensionless. So, so everything is fine here. When you have a continuous variable, uh, 
uh, you have to replace the, 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 the um, you have to replace the sum by an integral, and, and the p's are no longer p's, are, are, are not probabilities, are uh, densities. This is a density, and, and the density has units. Eh? This is uh, the units of this, uh, the units of, for instance, if x is the energy of a particle, the probability density has units of energy minus one. And if x is a position, it's position minus one. So this has dimensions. And this is a problem because here, if I change dimensions, I mean changing units, let me see, if I change units, sorry. If I express this in different units, uh, there is a, uh, a, a, here, this is x minus one, this is x, so this is five, this is dimensionless. But the log of rho, if I change the units, if I express rho in joules or rho in, in electron volts, I have a factor, and this factor is an additive factor in the entropy. So this is uh, not so well defined. This is called, this is usually called differential entropy. And also because p, p here is a probability, so it's between zero and one. But rho is, can be anything because it has units, so it, you can multiply by whatever you like. So the only requirement for rho is that it is positive. So um, this could be even be uh, negative, this thing, eh? this differential entropy. And, uh, and you don't have the, the uh, remember what was the, the interpretation of this? Is it the number of bits to describe x? And in differential entropy, there is also uh, 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 the same, there is something, some interpretation, which is also, uh, this is the number of bits, well, uh, by the way, this is the number of bits, this is log of two. This is the number of bits needed to describe x up to uh, a precision um, two to minus n. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, this is the number of bits uh, needed to describe if you sum n. So this is a uh, sorry. H no. H plus n is the number of bits to describe x up to a precision two minus n. So if you want, if you want to describe x as a, uh, instead of decimal expression, binary expression, you will have some digits. If you want n digits, this means a precision two to minus n. You want n digits in your description. Uh, then you need h plus n bits. So this is, uh, but things are much easier for discrete variables. For continuous variables, you have all these techn technical problems and so on. So these are two notes for uh, what, uh, the lesson that we had yesterday. Any question? Yeah, this is OK. This is a topic of another course, let's say. But uh, uh, one can prove the following, and maybe we will prove it. You have any x is anything, any any. Uh, so you have a process. You cannot cycle or whatever, or a machine that, uh, or even in the stationary regime, and you pick a, a, an observable. This x is a, x is anything, one observable. So um, and you measure this in the forward. You you run the process forward and backward, and then this is the forward and and this is. The backward, uh, which is uh, more or less maybe like that, you pick a time, and this is uh, and you pick an observable, and this is uh, the forward and the backward. You make a histogram of you run the experiment many times. You make a histogram, and this is uh, k times this is uh, bigger. Is uh, is um, smaller than 
sorry, uh, the entropy production, uh, yeah, this is smaller than the entropy production in the forward process. Yeah, if the process is reversible, then this is zero, and there is and, and the entropy. This is uh, uh, like that, no? <laughs> this is, if this is zero, uh, okay. Sometimes this is equal. Sometimes this sometimes this is less than, and sometimes this is equal. And we know when when when. Uh, so uh, if you if you if you observe reversibility in a process. Maybe you observe reversibility, but there is some ir some hidden entropy production there. Okay. In equilibrium, of course, this is zero, and this is uh, this is zero, and this is zero. No, no, this is for any time. So x could be any observable at any time. If x, actually we know that if x is the total, it can be even a functional observable, not an observable that depends on time, that, but an observable that depends on the process. If x is the work, this is an, equ an equality, which is related with Crookes theorem and so on. But okay, this is no, this is something else. Or uh, people is interested, and so I'm answering the question. But this is uh, beyond the, the course. Huh? N is just a number. So if you want to, uh, if you want to, um, to describe x with n binary digits, this is your precision. Then you need h plus n bits. So well, uh, it's, it's well, uh, and h plus n could be less than n. So it doesn't mean well, when we say we say in average how many bits you need in average to describe something. Eh? So if 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 it if it is uniform, it's clear that the number of bits is n because if it is a uniform, for instance, if it is if x is an, is a uni, is a number between zero and one in a uniform distribution you need to describe all the digits. So h is 0 in this case. Yeah, because you have log of rho. No? Suppose that, uh, suppose that you have a number between 0 and 1, and rho x is uniform. It's 1. No? Well, it's 1 if x is between 0 and 1, and 0 elsewhere. Okay, h, h in this case is zero because it's the log of one is zero. And then how many digits do you need to uh, describe this number, which is a random number here, uh, with a precision of n binary digits, n binary digits, <laughs> of course. But suppose that this is not uniform. Suppose that this is, a, this is something like that. Then this, these numbers are more likely. So you can play with that, and then um, and then make uh, describe this number x with less digits. Probably this has less entropy, a negative entropy actually. But it depends also on the on the on the units, because also the the number depends on the units. If you use other units, then uh, the number is different. So this is just to this is just to uh, to point out that information theory for continuous variables is more boring because there are a lot of technical issues. So I mean I mean information theory is fun by itself because it is uh, telling you uh, a lot of things on on how information is transmitted, stored, and so on. By the way, something that I didn't say yesterday, but I think it's important because this was 
for me, when I started to, uh, to, to learn uh, information theory, was kind of disappointed because, well, I was maybe 18 or something like that. So. And because I thought it was a theory, a mathematical theory of, of, of how we think or, how, or, or the language or how we express thoughts and things like that. And then you, say, you see that it is completely, it's just, it's just a theory of random variables. And, uh, but this was the great, and this is in the first paragraph of, of, of Shannon papers. It says, we start this theory by neglecting semantics, by neglecting the meaning of the messages. So we want to, as we want to, to make a, theory, a mathematical theory of messages, of, of mm. communication, but to do that, we have to uh, neglect the meaning and think only on the capacity of, of some string of bits to transmit information, but not on the content of that information. This is why a completely random sequence has more information than, I don't know, a text like uh, to be or not to be, or that's the question or something like that. So uh, it is um, for us, to be or not to be, that's the question, has more information than just random numbers. But for Shannon or for the theory of information, it doesn't because, uh, you know, because in the natural language, you have a lot of redundancies and, uh, and a lot of, uh, so uh, it has more information from the point of view of the information theory a completely random thing. Because information theory doesn't care about meaning. Yeah. OK, so that's enough for um, that's enough for information. Now we go to thermodynamics. I think here I don't have. Uh, well, and here you have also uh, here you have also uh, this the uh, in 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 today's uh, oops ah this is this is not my computer so in today's. Um, In yesterday's uh, slides here, Tuesday, uh, slides, uh, here you have uh, notes. This is not, uh, these are handwritten notes. Uh, and these are the notes for lesson two and lesson three. So it's, it's on, on, on the web page of Thursday, but it is uh, OK. But the notes are notes. I mean, the, the, if you want something more, uh, Rigorous, let's say, you go to the papers. Okay. So, uh, thermodynamics. We are going to study some uh, properties of thermodynamics, uh, but we are going to focus only uh, in, in systems that are in contact with a the thermal bath. So, you have a thermal bath at a given temperature. And you have also some external, uh, the, the, uh, the energy exchange between the thermal bath and the system is what we call heat. In these situations where you have a single thermal bath and an external agent, everything is very clear, uh, as I was going to uh, show you now. Uh, and, uh, and, and you have an external agent. And the, the energy exchange between the external energy and the, and the system is the work. Uh, so in, we are going to, st to study first this heat and work. And give some uh, expressions. First for, for general systems. And, uh, and then we can, um, uh, we will we will make a particular case of discrete systems, which are also sim much simpler. So uh, you have the, uh, we, I will call X the, mi the, um, the microscopic state of the system. Although we are uh, dealing with uh, uh, classical systems, everything 
it's not so difficult to generalize most of the results to quantum systems. And um, so this is, I prefer X, but, uh, and X could be even one of these easy models that you are studying with this act that uh, you have a plus one, minus one. These models are, well, you can have discrete classical models as well. Eh? If you have a, a, a classical system, but uh, in, for, for instance, of is, instead of a spins, you can have a bistable system that can be only stable in, two, uh, in a double world potential. And, and this is, so don't think that discreteness means quantum. You can have uh, uh, also classical systems uh, with discrete states. So you have a microscopic state here, and uh, you have an external agent that uh, 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 can manipulate some parameter of the Hamiltonian. So this is the parameter. You have a Hamiltonian, and the Hamiltonian depends on x and depends on the parameter. And because of the external agent, this uh, Hamiltonian is time dependent. So this is the Hamiltonian of my system. And then I will assume as well that you, we have a probability distribution over the micro of the microscopic states of the system. So this is we, we can call this the probabilistic state of the system. Oh, sorry. No, uh, lambda is not time. Lambda is eh? t is uh, is time. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. You change the idea is that you have a system and you change something. The, think of the Carnot cycle where you change the piston. Change. Think of the Szilard engine where you change the piston like that, or think of um, a field that you can switch on or switch off or modulate or whatever. So lambda could be anything. Eh? In Isaac, uh, 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 for instance, uh, he used this lambda, adding this field, no lambda by times the observable. That this morning I saw that uh, you are doing. This is a, a, a particular case where you can have any. So uh, this probabilistic state, you have different uh, different uh, theories. Or different, uh, yeah, theories that gives that tells you how this evolves in time. Maybe some of you know the Fokker plan equation, for instance. If you have a system in contact with a thermal bath, if you have a discrete system, this could be um, this could be a master equation. If it is a if it is a quantum system, you can even this could be a density matrix, and you will have something called the Lindblad equation that you probably you know. So the, we have an open system. So an open system is, all, is, is, is in, con, in contact with the thermal bath. We'll have a kind of uh, a stochastic evolution. And this stochastic evolution is uh, ruled by one of these equations. So this, this will have the, we will assume that this, well, that we can, in principle, know this evolution. This could be Liouville. Uh, if the, well, the if the system is isolated, so uh, let's put Fokker-Planck, uh, master equation, Lindblad, etc. So, um, okay. So, uh, how can we uh, uh, calculate heat and work here? If you compute uh, first, let's compute the energy. I will call this the energy. Because the Hamiltonian depends on time, the energy is not a constant of motion. And the energy is actually um, this, uh, uh, this average over x. So uh, I have to uh, integrate h like that. And now if I, if I calculate how the energy changes in time, the derivative, uh, I can put the derivative inside. 
and I have two terms. The first term is um, uh, the derivative, the partial derivative of h with respect to lambda times lambda dot. Let me put it like that. And the second term is uh, the Hamiltonian and then the derivative of rho with respect to time. So you have uh, that the, the energy changes because of two things. One is uh, the modification of the, the, the action of the external agent, and the other is the evolution of the, of the, of the rho itself. So this is, uh, one can check that this is heat, this is work, sorry. This is actually the exchange of energy that the external agent introduces, I mean, the, the energy that the external energy introduces into the system, and this is, this is uh, heat. Can we uh, prove this? Well, uh, the proof, uh, the best way, for me, the best way to, to understand this is, is to consider a quench. A quench uh, is, a, is just, if you have lambda, is to, uh, to consider that lambda is constant, and at some time, uh, you change the value of lambda to some other value. In this case, what is the work? The work is the energy that you introduce in, 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 since, since the, 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 this, this change is instantaneous, Rho doesn't change, and, and there is no time for the system to exchange energy with the heat bath. So the, the, the increment of energy due to this change is work, okay? And this is essentially this term here. After this happens, the system here, suppose that the system here is, is, is in equilibrium or in a stationary state and it's happy here, but then suddenly you change lambda. Then here you have a relaxation. And in this relaxation, the system is losing or absorbing energy. And this is heat, because the external agent is now, uh, the external agent only operated here. So here the external agent has no action. So you see, here, the work is concentrated in the quench time, and what the, all the exchange of energy in the relaxation is, is heat. And if you apply these formulas, you will see that here, what is happening in the relaxation is that the system is in contact with the thermal bath, and rho is changing, and the, the Hamiltonian is constant. And here is the other way around. Uh, you consider rho constant, and you see the the, the, the contribution to the energy of the system um, due to the, to the action of the agent. Okay, so, and this is the first, this is by unit of time. This is everything per unit of time, so I, we can write this like that. And this is the first law of thermodynamics. And of course, you can integrate in a process and so on. And also to be con to convinced that this is a work and heat, it's also interesting to consider a quasi-static process. In a quasi-static process, Uh, lambda uh, is, is, is very small, let's put it like that, lambda small. I want to put lambda close to zero because lambda has units. My students, I always say, if it has, something has units, you cannot say lambda much smaller than one or something like that. No, let's say lambda is small. Uh, and what happens in a quasi-static lim quasi limit? if a system is in contact with a thermal bath. Anybody knows what is uh, the consequence or what is? Eh? 
it is in equilibrium at any stage of the system of this of the process. So if uh, if if I have a quasi static process, rho x t rho x t is very complicated. As I said, you need to solve the Fokker-Pan equation, you need to solve the Limblad equation or the master equation and so on. But you know something that the steady state is the equilibrium. So, uh, and the equilibrium is the canonical. We call this the instantaneous equilibrium because this is if you freeze uh, lambda, you uh, uh, keep lambda constant, this is the system reaches this, this uh, state. No, and if the, if the process is very, very, very slow, then the system can be in equilibrium all the time. Of course, if the system is fast, like the quench in the quench is the opposite. Here you are in equilibrium and poof, suddenly you depart from equilibrium. But if the process is, is small, if, if this is small, you can have this. And then, and then this is a, uh, let's call it like that, rho, rho q rho a q x lambda. This is Gibbs state, yeah. Well, thermal state or whatever you like. Yeah, uh, you can have, this is for systems in contact with a single thermal bath. Of course, if you have different thermal baths at different temperatures, then things are more complicated. But I want just to, to, to look at this example. And you can also have other, uh, what is called generalized Gibbs states, which uh, are the exponential of uh, minus beta h plus some other quantities. Uh, conserved quantities, yeah. If you have more than one concert, uh, this is uh, thermal states are based on the f on the assumption that the only uh, uh, constant of motion is the energy, or the. Yeah. Well, actually, when you when you write down the Fokker-Pan equation, you force the equation to reproduce the Boltzmann distribution at for for long time, and this is the fluctuation dissipation relationship. So, uh, um, if if you are describing a system, you have to be sure that your theory, your equation, has as a, a, a steady state the thermal equilibrium. And this is fluctuation dissipation. In the case of Langevin equations, you have to force this and. To, in the case of master equations, you have to uh, impose detailed balance, which ensures you, ensures you that uh, the steady state is, is the equilibrium. In the Limblad equation, you also have to detail balance to put detail balance. And if your equation does not uh, reproduce the thermal state as, as, as in the long limit, then it's wrong. Then it's wrong. Then you can make a perpetuum mobile of the second kind, and then you can so no, you, you, this is a requirement of any theory that you have for describing a system, a physical system, is that if, if there is only a single thermal bath in the limit of T large, uh, the steady state should be uh, thermal. Well, I call it a steady state of the Fokker-Pan equation. And, and the steady state of the focal point equation must be the thermal, the equilibrium state. Yeah, equilibrium, and it's, I mean, equilibrium is a, is, a, is a particular case of steady state, which is this one. Usually, we said non-equilibrium steady state. When, when we want to, put, to say that the, the steady state is non-equilibrium, we use this uh, non-equilibrium steady state. Okay, so uh, if you put this here in the work, uh, we put now this, 
Um, and then here we have uh, well, this goes out of the integral, so you can put this is the work. And using this trick that uh, that uh, I guess uh, Isaac also used it not to prove that the that the average of the of this observable is uh, is is the partial derivative of log log z, you can take this out of the integral. This is for a given time. I could even for uh, remove the time, but it is uh, just to keep uh, the coherence with this expression. Now you have this, the derivative of and, and the exponential, and you can write this as the derivative of the exponential. Uh, like that. No, this is, I make the derivative, so I have to divide by beta and put a minus sign. Now if, I, if you make this derivative, I get the exponential again, evaluated in lambda t, and then, the, and, and then minus beta, which cancels with this minus beta, times the derivative of h with respect to lambda, evaluated in lambda t, okay? And now you can get this out of the, of the we can write this as kt minus lambda dot uh, z. Uh, beta can be kt. Beta is 1 over kt. And, and this is, uh, I, we can take this out of the integral, and I recover the, the, the partition function, the definition of the partition function. So this is the partition function. So the work, the work, uh, this is the, 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 the power actually, is the work per unit of time. The work is minus kt, uh, uh, minus lambda, and here is uh, the derivative with respect to lambda. Of uh, let me write this minus here, of minus kt log. Uh, well, in this case, it's natural log. So. And this is what we call free energy. This is the free energy in a statistical mechanics. So you have that the 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 work is lambda dot and the derivative of the free energy with respect to lambda. Uh, okay, and now if you integrate over a process, let's integrate this over a process. Uh, uh, w, which is between some t0 and t final, or initial and final, of uh, d omega t, sorry, omega, sorry, no, dt, uh, wt, you put this here, and uh, And you see that this is an exact differential, no? This is the derivative of f with respect to lambda, the derivative of lambda with respect to t. This is the, the, the antiderivative of this is f. So this is f at the final minus f at the beginning. 
So this is delta f. So the work is equal to delta f in, in a quasi-static and isothermal because the system, because this is quasi-static, the, the, the system is always at, 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 at temperature T. So quasi-static and isothermal process. And this is a result of thermodynamic that maybe you, 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 you remember. W is not an exact differential, so you cannot put W as the difference between two, between something at the end and something at the beginning. It depends on the path. But if the process is isothermal, then the work is just a difference of free energy. Okay? And this is in quasi-static. And the second law, if you like, uh, uh, is, is that W, uh, this is second law, that one can prove from here as well. Eh? The second law uh, can be proved using fokker pan equations or one of these equations. And one can prove that the work is always uh, mm, uh, uh, bigger than uh, delta F. And it's only equal to delta F in equilibrium. So work is always the, the work that the external agent is putting into the system. So the extracted work is minus, and then uh, it, this, this is telling you that also that delta F is the uh, maximum work that you can extract in a process eh, when delta F is negative. So when you go to, to something with high free energy to low free energy, you can extract this difference as work. And, uh, and, and if you do this irre reversibly in the, in the quasi-static limit, then um, uh, then the, you extract this amount of energy. So this is why it's called free energy, because it's the energy that you can convert into work eh, in the system. But always isothermally. Eh? If it is not isothermal, uh, things are more complicated. But this is just an illustration. Yeah. <laughs> Very good question. It just depends on the time scales. What do you think? In, in, in an expansion of a gas, what do you think is the speed to, to, to reach this in, in an expansion, no? What do you think, how, how fast you have to move the, the piston? Eh? Yeah, it, it, it is related with the, let's, it is related with the relaxation time of the system. A, every system described by a fogel pan equation and for, it's, it's, it has a relaxation time. Usually, it's related with the eigenvalue. You know a fogel pan equation has an eigenvalue equal to zero, which is the eigenvector is the stationary probability. And the next one tells you how fast the system relaxes. So uh, the, the time uh, lambda must be much slower than this. That this second, uh, I can buy. But we will, this is, will be important because we will, in information, uh, pros, in information devices, there are huge time scale separations. For instance, when you have a double well potential, and this is interesting because we will discuss this tomorrow, when we have a single well potential, a double well potential, you have a time scale for the relaxation within a potential which is maybe, it could be depending on the particle, but it could be milliseconds or, or seconds, let's say, if it is a Brownian particle and so on. And then you have the, 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 the time scale to jump. And the jump is necessary to re, to, for a global relaxation. So, and this could be of the order of millenniums or, 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 or the, the age of the universe. So you have two huge uh, differences, huge difference in time scale. When I say lambda is small, I'm assuming here that there is no this type of strange things, and then and that you have um, and that and, and lambda must be much slower than the re relaxation uh, processes in the system, and this is what allows you to be all the time in equilibrium. Eh? Which 
uh, we, sh we need the use of state, yeah. No, no, uh, from a Gibbs state, if you go from a Gibbs state with high free energy to, to a Gibbs state with low free energy, of course you can get work. Uh, 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 no, you cannot exact work in unitary. This is in quantum mechanics using unitary, this unitary uh, evolution. But using thermal baths, you can, you can extract work. Yeah, you can extract work. Yeah. But uh, using unitary evolution, you cannot, yeah. If it is isolated, if the system is isolated, then uh, uh, you cannot extract work from this state. This is called passive states. And, uh, and it's because you cannot extract work uh, in a Hamiltonian evolution. But if you are in contact with thermal baths, you can extract work. Yeah, suppose, I mean, the simplest case is suppose a particle in a, in a, double, in a potential like that. If, if, if you go from this to this potential, you extract work because the particle, unless the particle is just in the vertex, in the, in the, in the minimum, if the particle is here, it has some energy. And, and, and let's do like that. So uh, you have your particle, for instance, here. And you change the intensity of your, this is an optical trap, so you change the intensity to this one. So the particle loses this energy, and this is the work. Another thing is that in an optical trap, how to how you use this work? I mean, I don't know what he knows how to extract this work, but in principle, this is work. This is work, and the same. Is, uh, this is like an expansion. We have also with Edgar a, a Brownian a Brownian cycle. Where, the, where instead of a gas, we use a Brownian particle, and the expansion is like that, and the compression is like is, is, is opening the potential, and the expansion is closing the potential, and we did this with optical traps in a, in a laboratory. So yeah, uh, passive states, is, you cannot take energy from this state using unitary evolution or in, in quantum mechanics. Huh? In the? Yeah, some people call it like that, but. Uh, I don't, I'm not familiar with ergotropy. I, I don't know. Yeah, but this is, for, this is when you have, I think ergotropy is when you have different thermal baths and things like that. Then I don't know. But, uh, okay, so free energy is very important. And, um, and one of the things that we want to do is um, is to apply this to the... To this, um, to all, all what we talk the first day, you know, the the um, the Maxwell demon, the Silar engine, and so on, uh, processes where information is important. And, and processes where information is important, is, uh, the, the main thing is that they are uh, out of equilibrium. Um, why? And this is important because information thermodynamics is actually a statistical mechanics for, but applied to 
things that can store information or can uh, manipulate information. And what is information? This is a, maybe this reflection is for the end of the course, but um, it, uh, it is good to uh, advance this now. And um, if you think of a hard drive or DNA, which is also a, a, a system that stores information, what do you think is the, the most important characteristic of, this, of those devices? Reliable, and what means reliable in terms of physical properties? Shouldn't change. So you need something that uh, has a long life um, states. But uh, but equilibrium is long life. <laughs> equilibrium is eternal. So, but you need uh, something else. What is uh, this something else? You need states with long life, but uh, uh, you need more than one state. So you because you need a zero one or or GTAC in the case of, so you need systems that have uh, different states. They have to, these, those states need, must be long life states, no? And what else? I would, I would add something else. Because okay, you have a zero one in a hard drive, GCTA in a DNA, uh, but uh, these states can be anything or? You need to manipulate the zeros and ones in a bit, you need also that, um, that they are, uh, that you can go from one to the other, maybe remove. They need to be stable, but by some mechanism you need to also to go from one to the other. And, and this, this happens in DNA in mutations. But also, in DNA you don't, I mean mutations are not so good, so, uh, but in DNA you also need um, something else that the, all the machinery, the chemical machinery that um, manipulates DNA for replication, transcription and so on, uh, must be such that the, three, the four bases, G, A, C, T, uh, must be similar in which respect to the machinery, because otherwise you would need a machinery for G, you need a machinery for E, and, and the same thing works with the four. So they must have some similarities, and the same for zeros and ones, you know, because it is uh, just uh, the, the states of magnetic domains. You know? So you need uh, uh, um, distinct states with a long life, but at the same time, that manipulating some parameter, you could uh, jump from one to the other, and that they must be somehow uh, equivalent, or, or they must be similar. And uh, the, the, the minimal model for that is, uh, is, uh, is the double world potential. Actually, if you think of this idea, uh, what you need is really a symmetry breaking. You need a system with a symmetry breaking in which you you know what is a spontaneous symmetry break. You know when your Hamiltonian is symmetric, uh, but the system breaks the symmetry and it goes, it's like that. Here the, here the, the system, the, the, the Hamiltonian is, here the Hamiltonian is this potential. This is a potential. Uh, 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 and the potential is symmetric. But if you have a single particle, if you have a bunch of particles, you will see this density. But if you have just one, or if the barrier is very large and you start with uh, particles in the, on the left, they will remain on the left. So this system does not equilibrate. This system breaks the symmetry. Uh, it's not the symmetry breaking that you are used to, which is based on, on, on many degrees of freedom on the, on the easy model. But the idea is that uh, you, need, um, uh, you need this uh, kind of symmetry breaking, and, and this is, uh, uh, at least for me, uh, the main characteristic of information devices. So, uh, uh, to summarize what is now thermodynamic of information, thermodynamic of information is thermodynamic applied to this, this type of Hamiltonians, or this type of devices. Okay? And in these devices you have, uh, you have that you never equilibrate completely the system. You never reach a global equilibrium. You reach the, the, the state, even though uh, you, 
do a quasi-static process, but quasi-static in the sense of relaxation within each well, but not so slow, because maybe the, the time to jump here is the age of the universe, so you can never reach this stationarity. So now we have two huge, hugely separated time scales. One here, the evolution here, and the other is the jumps. And if your process is in between, it's quasi-static with respect to each well, but it's not, quasi it's, it's not able to uh, equilibrate the system globally. So this is uh, what happens, for instance, in this sequence. Uh, this is an example. No? We have uh, a barrier like that. And if you lower this, you know that if you apply the, the equilibrium, I mean, if, you, if, if this is really in equilibrium, particles will have more probability to be here because the energy is lower here than here. But of course, the system cannot, if you come from here, the system cannot relax. It will take the, the age of the universe to relax because you need the jumps. So the state will remain like that, one half, one half, if you come from here, okay? Uh, think of that you come from here, you lower this, this, this well, and then this is, uh, this is like, this is a state which is not, is out of equilibrium. It's out of equilibrium. Because it's not, the, it's not the Gibbs state. In the Gibbs state, this peak will sh should be uh, larger. It's local equilibrium, but not global equilibrium. Okay? And uh, this is one of the features of information devices. So you have non-equilibrium states like this one. This is a non-equilibrium state. So all these things are not valid, so we have to modify these things. It's, and thermodynamics is the uh, of thermodynamics information is just the theory of this type of states. Okay? And this type of, even the state can depend on the information that we have about the system. If we now measure, if it's a single particle, and we measure and the particle is on the, on the, on the left, then suddenly we have a kind of collapse of the, of the probability density. And this is, a, a, again, non-equilibrium. So you see that the state of the system of these devices depends on the history, because it depends on where this comes from, depends on the measurements that we do, depends on the information. They are mostly in equilibrium, because we are locally in equilibrium, but the global state depends on a lot of things. On a, on, depends on the information that we have, depends on, on we, whether we have measured or not, etc. And we would like to have some theory like this one for these type of states. And this is uh, what we have is, this is provided by something called the non-equilibrium free energy. And the non-equilibrium free energy, which is only valid for systems in contact with thermal bath. So we, 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 we still have this scheme, the thermal bath, We can generalize this, but this is, uh, let's, let's, let's focus on this scheme because this scheme is the Sealer engine as well. And, and the work done by the external agent. But now we don't have this identity. We don't have this identity. Uh, actually, we don't have even, the system is no longer the Gibbs state, so we don't have a, uh, partition function, so we don't have even a, a free energy. But even though we don't have all these things, we can still define a, no, a free energy for non-equilibrium states. And this free energy is we use this letter, this is the non-equilibrium, and it's defined for a rho and for a Hamiltonian. So it's a function, um, it's, it's a number that you give me a, a probabilistic state of the system, uh, like this one, 
And if you give me a Hamiltonian like this one, well, here we don't have kinetic energy. The kinetic energy in these examples of wells and Brownian particles does not play any role because it's always in equilibrium. And, 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 and I can calculate the free energy. And what is the free energy? Well, it's, you remember the free energy is in thermodynamics is E minus Ts. So this is the, the most, uh, uh, this is going to be the energy minus T and the Shannon entropy. So this is a minus K uh, sum over X of rho X log rho X. And this is the non-equilibrium free energy. Yeah, uh, uh, some properties. Uh, uh, if um, uh, if if rho is the equilibrium one, then this is f. This is minus k t log c. If the so the non-equilibrium free energy applied to equilibrium states is equal. Uh, another property which is nice is that um, the the the, if the system is not in equilibrium, the non-equilibrium free energy is equal to the equilibrium free energy uh, plus kt, the cool back library distance between the rho and the rho equilibrium. And this is always positive. So this means that this is always bigger or equal than the equilibrium. So the non-equilibrium free energy is always bigger than the equilibrium free energy. And, and the, the, the final property, or the most important property, is that what, what it's going to allow us to uh, uh, use uh, non-equilibrium free energy to quantify, to, to, uh, to obtain the energetics of of processes where information is important is, is this, well, I, the, I, this is not a property, this is just the main result, is that in a process, uh, the work uh, needed to, um, to, to complete the process is always bigger than the non-equilibrium free energy, the, 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 non the increment of non-equilibrium free energy. So, um, so the non-equilibrium free energy has the same uh, meaning than the equilibrium free energy for non-equilibrium state. It tells you how much work you can extract if you go from up to down, or it tells you how much work do you need to put in a system to go from, from low free energy to high free energy? No. From low free energy to high free energy, delta F is positive, so you need to put work. Remember that work is always positive if you put work into the system. In a motor, when you extract work, W is negative, and delta F must be, of course, negative as well, so you need to go from high to low. No, the partition function is all only defined for the Gibbs state. I mean, if you have one of these generalized Gibbs states, you mean, or what? No, no, no. because uh, not the alternate states in the Gibbs state. Uh, in this state, in this state, in, in the world, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can uh, find in some expression of the thermal state, but uh, the H is not representing the Hamiltonian. It's just uh, representing the operator for the Ah. 
for uh, for uh, yeah 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 go on uh, for it's the uh, equilibrium stage we can uh, we can consider in the existence of uh, some operator for example h0 and the no equilibrium stage can be equal the exponential of minus beta h0 at z0 where z0 it's the truss yeah of, uh, but here h0 is not the Hamiltonian of the system it's just operator for defining some new state some no equilibrium new state okay yeah he's telling that um and we, we can have uh, the partition yeah, that any in principle you can find you can write any row as exponential of minus something beta divided by something beta something some operator yeah but this is a uh, this is Mm, this has, in principle, this has nothing to do with the non equilibrium free energy. Uh, I mean, uh, maybe for some, for some, may, maybe you can do this. Yeah, if you have here something, A, and here you have N, of course, log of rho minus log of rho is, is A minus log of N. So you can play with that. But uh, and maybe you can find some expression for the non-free for the non-equilibrium free energy. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. But uh, you know why I, I, I see that because uh, for, uh, for for some states, for some non-equilibrium state, this, the, the partition function, uh, the truss at the exponential of minus beta h zero, for example, uh, equal the partition function of the. the the, the, the well, let's discuss this later because okay. it is a very technical thing and, this, uh, and it is not a... Uh, um, okay, uh, so maybe you want a proof of that, no, or not? Or are you happy? This is, this is the main result of, uh, of a statistic. Uh, of, uh, this is the main tool. I mean, just applying this, you can explain the Silar engine, everything. So uh, this is uh, the thing that we are going to use... Uh, uh, on on Friday and uh, to understand the max the the Silla engine and so on, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is also this is an interesting question that um, we have. This non-equilibrium free energy is, uh, I think, the first time it appeared in the literature was in the 70s, in a very strange book that I never, I never found it. It's, uh, it's something like the drops that come out from a faucet or something like that. <laughs> it was, uh, this, is the, this is the name of the book, and, uh, but I, I never found it. But it was uh, cited as the first time this appeared, this uh, notion appeared. And then, uh, um, we have used it in the 90s and in, in, in 2000. We have used it for for not for this for thermodynamics of information, but people have used it for a, a lot of different things. In stochastic thermodynamics, it is well used. And um, I don't know. Yeah, for active systems, in principle, you can use it as well. Although the problem with active, uh, yeah, for active systems you can use it as well. But uh, um, tomorrow, I'm, I'm uh, very slow because uh, today was the plan was to finish this lesson, but uh, I will finish tomorrow. But um, tomorrow we will see uh, molecular motors, and uh, we will see that in case of uh, most act active systems, what they have is. Uh, consumption of, an, of some fuel, like ATP or something like that. So um, in this case, uh, the problem is more complicated. You can do this as well. You can do this as well. But it is more related with, um, with the entropy production in the environment, in, the, in this case, in the fuel. So uh, tomorrow, maybe tomorrow we can discuss on that. So is there an equivalent of a quasi-static process where you get the equal uh, okay. sign there? Okay, this is in a process, this is, and there is the, uh, okay, I, I'm glad that you made this question, because I, well, well nobody, uh, uh, nobody will ask for the proof, but uh, 
uh, there is the proof of this is uh, actually oops actually the proof of this is in no. the proof of this is spread in different papers in the in the review that I showed you uh, I I think yeah, I think there is a, the, the, a, a very rigorous proof in, in, in one of the reviews. Huh? Yeah, there are, uh, uh, and also Van den Broek and Esposito uh, uh, have a proof, and I don't know how to do this. Uh, okay. Uh, but uh, I will show you not a proof, rigorous proof, but but this is in our, our, our review in Nature, this, this picture, and it's just an idea of why this is so, and, and why this, uh, uh, and, and uh, the, the question in, in, in to, to derive this, we are thinking of a process. Uh, now it could be quasi-static or not, let's, let's uh, discuss this in a moment, but a process that connects something which is out of equilibrium with something which is out of equilibrium. Because delta F is the final non-equilibrium free energy minus the initial equilibrium free energy. So I want a process that is the initial state is non-equilibrium, the final state is non-equilibrium. Well, to make it easier, uh, let's discuss the case where the initial state is non-equilibrium and the final state is equilibrium, because uh, it's easier. So uh, the idea is that you have we represent the Hamiltonian, in this case, it's a potential like that, and this is the state. And this is clearly out of equilibrium, no? Because, I mean, exponential of the potential is not in equilibrium. So uh, if, if you let a, a, a relaxation, if you let the system relax, this is equilibrium, no? This is more or less the Boltzmann state corresponding to this potential, or the Gibbs state corresponding to this potential. If you do this, what is the work and what is the heat? You just let the system relax without doing anything. Huh? Heat, work is work is zero, and there is the dissipation of heat. Or the contrary, maybe sometimes the system adopts uh, the system uh, as some. Uh. So uh, if you do that, you don't get any work. So, but what is the best thing you can do if you want to extract work from this? From the, this is an equilibrium state. So supposedly. This has a, uh, some capacity to provide energy to you. OK, it's easy to see that the, first, the, the best way is the following, is to, to modify the potential such, in such a way that the, the state is in equilibrium. And you do this instantaneously. You go here instantaneously. It's a, it's a kind of cheap trick, because it is, <laughs> I mean, you start out of equilibrium, but immediately you put the system in equilibrium. So uh, this is instantaneous, and then for now you are in the in the green part of the of the plot, which is equilibrium. So now you can use equilibrium thermodynamics. You can use what we have derived at the beginning of the class. So you can quasi statically go from here to here, and then uh, you have a, and then you go there. Uh, if you do that, it's easy to prove. That, I mean, it's very, it's so easy that I can, I can prove it here if I have five, five minutes. That, uh, what is the work? The work is, uh, there are two steps. One is the instantaneous uh, quench, if you like. Let's call it quench. Quench means that, uh, that uh, it's very fast, something. So you have a quench, and, and the quench is that um, this, is, uh, this is instantaneous, so there is no heat. And the only work comes from the difference of energy from here to here. So I have, um, uh, if this is, this is H0, this Hamiltonian, and this is H rho. H rho, by the way, if I want, H rho must be such that, must be such that, Rho, rho is my initial state, by the way, and, uh, and this is a nasty uh, notation because rho is the initial and rho zero is the final, and it's because it's in equilibrium with h zero. <laughs> okay, but, uh, uh, so you have such that rho initial is equilibrium. 
So this means that rho initial must be exponential of minus beta h rho. So this means that h rho must be kt log rho initial. So this must be, maybe it's impossible, but if we are trying just to make a, a general statement. So let's say we start with a, with a rho. The idea is first instantaneously we change our Hamiltonian from H0 to KT log rho. And with this trick, this is a new Hamiltonian. Let's call H. What is the notation here? H rho. And with this trick, we immediately go to equilibrium. And now quasi statically, we go from H rho to H0 again. That's it. So what is the work? In the first quench is I've changed from H rho to H0. So uh, initially I have an energy H0 average over rho, and finally I have an energy H rho over rho. And then in the, in the quasi-static, which is this one, from H rho to H zero, everything is in equilibrium. So I can apply uh, the, what I have derived before in the previous, uh, the free energy of zero and the free energy of rho. The equilibrium, eh? equilibrium free energy, okay? So now if you sum the total work, If you sum these, these things, we have F0. F0 is H0 in rho 0, because it's equilibrium, and minus T, the Shannon entropy of rho 0. F rho uh, is, um, is uh, H rho in rho, average over rho plus T S rho. And then I have to sum this, which is uh, H rho in rho minus H zero in rho. And uh, things should, uh, um, sorry, I was too fast. And uh, things should uh, cancel. Ah, yeah, this cancels with this. And then I get H zero in rho Ts rho, this is the final free energy. This is the final, so, sorry, this is the initial free energy. This and this is the initial free energy. Non-equilibrium, and now it's non-equilibrium. Eh? Because now, you see, I'm averaging H0 over rho, which is not the equilibrium distribution. This is the important part. And this, this is the equilibrium. This is equilibrium free energy, so this is the final. This is the final, uh, and this is the initial. Because of this row, this is the initial row, eh? So this is the, the initial. Sorry that it was a bit fast, but if somebody has uh, problems, uh, I mean, it's, very, it's, it's a one, one line calculation, so it doesn't. And then uh, it, 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 uh, uh, two, two more things. Uh, we have derived this. Uh, then, um, well, first thing, when this is equal, we have the idea that this is equal. The inequality is more involved. But I, I've shown you that there is a process where I can go from here to here, extract, well, making uh, this minimal work delta F, or exactly work if you like, okay? And, um, and this process is reversible. And you say, my God, it's reversible, but if everything is non-equilibrium. Well, if you think it's operationally reversible in the sense that if you do this thing in the, you run the protocol, the protocol is a quasi-static change from this potential to this potential, and a rapid quench from this potential to this potential, uh, the process is indistinguishable, the forward and the backward, even though the systems are in non-equilibrium. So this is also important. The equality is rich when the process is operationally irreversible, which means that it is indistinguishable. The state of the system 
in the forward process and in the backward process. And to end, and, this, and you can say, oh my God, so if everything that works in equilibrium now works out of equilibrium, uh, that's great, no? But of course here there is, a, there is something which is very strange, which is the quench. I mean, I mean it's like cheating. Okay, you, are, you, you start out of equilibrium, but immediately you are in equilibrium. So who, this, I mean, who cares about that? It's like, like you are in equilibrium uh, just during a millisecond. And, and, and of course, of course this is nothing. But the nice point here, so this, this means that this couldn't be applied to a real system because, I mean, you are, your, your initial state is, is just, let's say, it's a fraud. I mean, because you use it as initial state, but then you immediately go to the, another. But this is very important for information devices because in information devices you have the huge, the huge separation of time scale. So you can have non-equilibrium states which have a very long lifetime, which are essentially stationary like the ones that we have seen in the two worlds. So then we can apply that. Because the, then this can be non-equilibrium in the sense of two wells and maybe, uh, the, uh, and it's a state that is completely stable but out of equilibrium. And then you can do this process. And, and so this a, a scenario, although it seems very artificial, is something that you can do in, in information devices as well. And this is, I don't know if this answers your question, but it is more or less. And that's it. Because we have to leave now. <laughs> so sorry, there uh, no, no, no time for questions. If you have questions, I will be around and we can discuss whatever. And do the exercises that, uh, and Leah will be also uh, around this afternoon. Yeah, I have to...